Hey guys, it's Vids, and I'm back here with another Square Enix news video. A lot of things happened this week, uh, as I always say, I guess, because that's why I'm doing this. So, first thing we got is for Nier, and if you don't know what the Nier series is, it's actually an RPG, action RPG series that branched out for the Dragon Guard series. And they're directed by Yoko Taro, and they're published by Square Enix, but uh, in terms of Nier Automata, Platinum Games made that. So yeah, Nier Automata is actually getting an anime adaptation, which is kind of surprising, because uh, this is a type of game that has a ton of endings, so kind of curious how they're going to handle that, but uh, we have no specifics in terms of how many episodes it's going to be, or who's directing it, or if the Yoko Taro is going to be involved in all of that. We have no idea how they're going to handle it. All we have is this picture. All we really know in terms of production is that Aniplex is producing the anime, so they did Full Metal Alchemist and Sword Art Online, so I guess maybe the production value of this will be good at least, but we don't know if the pacing is going to be well or anything like that. Because if you remember the Worlds With You anime, the pacing wasn't really too well, and that's the main problem it really had. Like, animation-wise and all that, it was good, but pacing was wrong, and it didn't really do the game story justice. So, I'm hoping they could pull this off, but, I mean, only time will tell. And the next thing I have for you is about Triangle Strategy. If you guys don't remember it, it is a tactical RPG made by Square Enix. It's in the same HD 2D style as Octopath Traveler, and you know, you move your little units around, and you attack your enemies, got all the different classes and such. Yeah, it's out now. I think it came out today, actually. So, you can get it on Nintendo Switch if you want. Maybe it'll come to PC eventually, just like, you know, Bravely Default 2 and Octopath Traveler. But, uh, yeah, if you're into tactical RPGs, you'll want to check out the demo and see if you like it. You can use the latest demo and transfer it to the full game, and you'll be able to just continue from there. Alright, so now we're getting into the Final Fantasy section, which, of course, in all of these, there's always a Final Fantasy section. So, first things first, Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster has been released, and it's actually on sale, 20% off right now. So, if you've been wanting to get that, you probably want to get it now, since it's cheaper than it will be later. So, yeah, that's the final thing in the Pixel Remaster. It's fully completed now, no more games after this because they did all the 2D Final Fantasy games. Hopefully they'll put it on consoles eventually, but we don't know. No one knows on that, but uh, yeah, Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster has been released. So if you've been waiting for that, then I mean, it's out now. You can go check it out. Also in terms of Final Fantasy XIV, if you guys enjoy that, uh, the trial is finally back. You know, the free trial and of course purchases are back, but free trial and all that. If you want to continue playing the game for free until level 60, then you can continue your trial. And, um, you know, if you end up liking it, I guess you can go subscribe to it and eventually get up to Endwalker and all of that. But, uh, yeah, just mainly to anyone who's trying to get into 14, the free trial is back, so you could go play it again if you want to. And also, just a reminder, Final Fantasy Origins Stranger of Paradise is coming out on March 18th. That's pretty soon. It's in 14 days, um, as of recording at least. So, coming out pretty soon, if you don't remember what it is. It was that game they revealed a while back that's in the world of Final Fantasy 1. But uh, it has, like, uh, from what we think it is, we think it's a isekai kind of thing. They haven't, like, explicitly said what it is yet, you know, which is good. They're not, like, spoiling the game in the trailers. But uh, they have tons of trailers of them, and the game's coming out pretty soon. Definitely check it out if you're into it. It looks pretty cool to me. You know, I at least like it. Some people are iffy on it, but uh, I liked it from the first trailer, so it's pretty exciting. And the last Final Fantasy thing I have is for Final Fantasy VII Remake, or you could just say Final Fantasy VII in general. The Final Fantasy VII novel is coming out, and this one's actually about the past of Aerith and Tifa, apparently. Um, now, what I think it is, is uh, I think it's maybe going to be talking about what happens in between the Nibelheim event and, you know, the beginning of Final Fantasy VII, because if you played the games, you'll know that, of course, uh, Tifa was there. We know what happened with Tifa in the past around the Nibelheim event and before that, but in between the Nibelheim event and the beginning of Final Fantasy 7, you know, we don't really know much of what happened, I mean, in terms of the main game at least. And for Aerith, maybe we'll even hear about her waiting for Zack and all of that. That's just my guess, because that's what makes sense to me, at least for what they want to flesh out in terms of their backstory and what we don't know already. So yeah, it actually could be pretty interesting. If you guys are into Aerith or t or just Final Fantasy 7 in general, if you want to learn more about them, check that out. Also, apparently for Final Fantasy 7 Remake, uh, the Material Ultimate Plus is coming out in December of this year, 2022. It says the second Material Ultimate volume of the Deluxe Hardcover book packed with art, visual reference materials, staff commentary, and more. So, uh, honestly, if you just want to see all the different books that Square Enix comes out with, they have the Square Enix Manga and Books Twitter account. You could see a bunch of stuff. Um, uh, you know, today, I mean, they had the two Final Fantasy VII things. They also apparently announced a Nier Automata manga, so uh, there's that too. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's lots of different Square books and manga, honestly. There's probably some more novels I haven't even heard of before. 
in terms of Final Fantasy VII, but uh, let me know if you guys read those novels and if, you know, I should read them too. And the last thing we got today is about the GDCA, which is the Game Developers Choice Awards. So apparently for 2022, there was two, you know, awards given. There was the Ambassador Award and there's the Lifetime Achievement Award. This year, the Lifetime Achievement Award has been given to Yuji Horii, which is the creator of Dragon Quest. And uh, I think that makes sense because Dragon Quest is a wildly influential series to, you know, GRPGs. And I mean, yeah, I think it makes sense. It's about time that you got one. People like Hironobu Sakaguchi got one, Hideo Kojima, Mark Cerny, uh, Todd Howard, all of them, you know. So I think it's about time you get to one too because Dragon Quest is just a huge series, especially in Japan. And uh, he's still going strong, honestly. 11 was pretty great. And uh, hoping 12 is good. But uh, yeah, good for him. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely leave a like and subscribe if you learned something new. Or if you just enjoyed the video. And I'll be seeing you guys next time.